Thanks very much. Good morning, everyone. You're very welcome to, to Trinity and to, to this presentation on physiotherapy. So what I hope to do in the next few, few minutes is to just describe the career physiotherapy and alongside that, the course in physiotherapy. And then I'm very happy to answer any questions that, that you might have. So I say what I'll talk about is what it is and, and what the course here involves. I really think it's important that you know what the career is because you would, if you choose to do physiotherapy, you'll be here for four years. And you, you, you know, um, so you need to know about the course, but you really know, need to know more long-term about if it's the right career option for you. So I suppose what is it? And I, I'm sure a lot of you have impressions of, of what physiotherapy is. And a lot of people have an awareness of physiotherapy because they've gone for treatment themselves. And I'm sure a lot of you, particularly if you've played sports, have ended up in physiotherapy and thought, well, this is actually something I could see myself doing. But it's much wider than, than, than the experience you might have seen in a sports or outpatient department. And really, to try and, to try and sum it up, it's a health profession concerned with helping to restore well-being to people following injury, pain, or disability, which is really very vague and, and, and very open. But it's a very wide career with a number of different areas that people go into. And I suppose really what we're, what we're aiming to do is to try and re restore people's physical functioning after be it injury or, or disease, trying to improve people's physical performance. So what they actually do is they ass physiotherapists assess, diagnose and treat conditions and illnesses that affect people of all ages from small babies to very elderly people. They assist a patient in preventing injury, and that's particularly important in occupational, injury, in occupational um, settings where people may be at risk of developing back injury or repetitive strain injury, or they're involved in the prevention of injury, particularly in sport. And in a wider context, physiotherapy is involved in promoting a healthy lifestyle for all people that they, they, they may come in contact with. There's probably three core skills um, um, that, that we can base physiotherapy around. And that is therapeutic exercise, manual therapy, and electrophysical modalities. And certainly in recent years, there's much more emphasis on therapeutic exercise and much less on the other two. But they still have an important part in the overall treatment of a patient. So who do they, what do they do and who do they treat? Well, a broad range of physical problems, but particularly those problems that are associated with neuromuscular, musculoskeletal, cardiovascular and respiratory conditions. And the main aim in treating all of these conditions is to help the person um, to achieve their maximum potential, particularly in terms of physical functioning. So, these would be some of the areas where physiotherapy would, th physiotherapists would work. In the area of musculoskeletal, physiotherapists work in hospital settings or in private practice, treating back, neck, joint problems and acute sports injuries. In the area of neurology, and this could happen either in a hospital setting or in outpatient settings, in primary care settings, physiotherapists are involved in treating people who've had a stroke who have Parkinson's disease, or anybody who has problems with mobility, problems with walking. The area of orthopaedics is, very, is a huge area, particularly for people who are about to have hip and knee replacements. And physiotherapists are very involved in treating patients both before and after their, their joint replacements. In the area of cardiac care, people who have had um, a heart attack or who've had surgery, um, physiotherapy is a huge part of the overall rehabilitation of these patients. In paediatrics, and, and paediatrics is really quite a specialised area um, within physiotherapy, and students have experience, do, do gain some experience, but people who tend to work in that area often go on and specialise post-graduation. Post, um, and the area of paediatrics in itself is very wide 
treating babies in special care baby units, neonatal, very small, small babies, helping children in development, developmental clinics or schools, children who ha haven't developed normally and may need assistance with achieving sitting upright, walking independently uh, and other motor skills. The area of women's health, um, advising and treating people before and after childbirth and also later on in, in, in life um, they may be involved in other, um, in other conditions in the area of gynaecology. In respiratory disease, and I think this is something that I'm sure it, it would be new to a lot of you, you'd never have thought that physiotherapists would be involved in treating patients with respiratory disease, um, but in patients who have cystic fibrosis, chronic obstructive lung disease, they'll often have breathing problems, problems with clearing secretions, and so physiotherapy has quite a big part to play in the rehabilitation of patients with respiratory disease. And then in sports teams and clinics, helping people to recover from injury and to prevent further injury and a full return to, to fitness. So as you can see, it's very broad. Are some of you amazed by how broad it is? Yeah. The general thing thought that it was more to do with, with, with uh, sports injuries. So the areas where physiotherapy work, and these are listed and I'll go through them, and I just want to say to you that really where healthcare is going now, there's, in Ireland, there's a much more of a shift of services being provided in primary care rather than in hospital settings, and physiotherapy practice is mirrored alongside that, and there's a lot more developments within the primary care settings than there probably is within the hospital settings. So I'll just go through the different areas. Most hospitals will have a very large physiotherapy department. Um, and hospitals such as St. James's may have anything from you know, 30 to 40, 50 physiotherapists who will all work in different units. And generally, um, people on graduation will rotate through those units so that they'll get a wide spectrum of, of experience. But within a hospital department, there would be outpatient settings, There'd be the medical and surgical wards, the intensive care, coronary care. There may be specialised centres such as in St. James's, there's a Burns unit, um, and, and other hospitals may have their own specialities. So in, in hospital settings, physiotherapists get a very broad range of experience if they rotate through all of those different um, units. Community and primary care, and this is where there's a lot of more of investment in services. Traditionally, in community care, physiotherapists were more involved in going to people's homes um, and treating them um, um, on their own in homes. Now, a lot of the primary health care centres have large um, physiotherapy departments with gyms, with outpatient facilities, and so patients are more likely to come to the primary care centre for treatment. Special schools, helping children who with, um, with, with learning um, difficulties. Um, and in a number of special schools, there will be quite a large physiotherapy department. In the workplace, this is, big, this is an area, another area that's growing in physiotherapy, and a lot of the very big companies like Google and, um, what's just the other one that's here? You know, your IT people. What? Intel, yeah, and there's, some, there's another kind of one, I don't know if it's Facebook or one of these, um, where there's very large companies. Um, they will invest in having an occupational health department and employing a physiotherapist to try and prevent work-related injuries. Private practice, um, a lot of people set up their own private practices. And there, in private practice, the, 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 the treatments tend to be more around patients with sports injuries or with musculoskeletal injuries. So what are the qualities you need? Well, you need to get satisfaction from working in healthcare. You need to be interested in healthcare, have good practical skills, very good communication skills, be reasonably fit. Then if you have all these, it might be the right career for you. You need to enjoy the challenges of working, assessing a patient and working with the patient over what can often be quite a prolonged period of time that you've got one-to-one -one treatment with this individual patient. I always think it's important to have some idea of, of how physiotherapists work. And I think if you can get experience in hospitals, I would really recommend you do that so that you know this is something I would like to do. 
it's getting more and more difficult to go in, and I'm sure some of you, did some of you do transition year placements in, in hospitals? It's getting more and more difficult to arrange them. If you actually go onto the website of a number of hospitals, they will have an open day, and it's worthwhile keeping an eye on that and going to that open day where they will allow um, potential students to see sort of the, the range of, of, of different areas and different practice. I know St. James's often have one. It's either the week before or after Easter. But I would encourage you to go onto the websites of, of hospitals that you may live near to see if they do have a, an open day within their physio department. And it allows you then to see... To actually watch somebody treating a patient and th you can think, well, is that something I'd like to be able to do? Or is it something that, that's right for me? So that was really about physiotherapy. In terms of the course in, in Trinity, it's a four-year degree that leads to professional qualification. So when, when, when you're finished, you're a chartered physiotherapist. And basically, in year one and two, the students spend time on basic sciences and an introduction to physiotherapy skills. And then year three and four, half of the time is spent in clinical practice, and the other half is spent on the air, in subjects in clinical sciences clinical and, and a research project. So in year one, it's very much the basic sciences, anatomy, clinical anatomy, physiology, physics, and chemistry. And the... the Courses in anatomy and physiology are very large courses. The ones in physics and chemistry are much smaller. And don't, I mean, there's very few people who are going to have the three sciences, chemistry, phys, um, chemistry uh, biology, and physics. Most people will, own, will have two. Um, and therefore, will, they will be new to one of those, one of those areas. But the, the, their, the, the courses in physics and chemistry are, are relatively short, and certainly students have no problem if they, if they work hard in, 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 in getting to the required standard. In year two, there's an introduction to the, sort of the, varying er the various areas of physiotherapy practice, manual therapy, therapeutic exercise, and electrotherapy, and an introduction to the areas that physiotherapy work, physiotherapists work in, such as respiratory disease, uh, musculoskeletal disease, orthopedics, elderly care, and, and general pathology. And this is some of an example of, of students who would be in one of the classes on exercise therapy. And the students do an, an awful lot of practical work in the classes so that they're then able to teach that when they go out into clinical practice, which they start at the end of second year. These are different pictures of some of the, the physiotherapists learning how to do the specific exercises that then they're going to teach patients once they're in practice. This is an example of electrotherapy treating a patient um, with ultrasound, uh, which is one of the electrotherapy uh, modalities. In the end, at the end of second year, students do their first clinical placement. And then, as I say, in third year and fourth year, half of the time they're spent on, on clinical placements. In addition to that, in third year, there's a lot of time spent in, in paediatrics, uh, musculoskeletal, neurology, women's health, care of the elderly. And the students are start on their research methodology and statistics, because in the final year, they do a research project. The clinical placements, which happen in third year and fourth year, are, are done in a variety of, of, of settings. Two of the main places where practically, well, all students would spend some time in is the two main teaching hospitals, St. James's Hospital and um, Tala Hospital, which are the two main teaching hospitals of Trinity. Clinical placements tend to be about four or five weeks duration. They're spread through hospitals, child development centres, and in primary care. And they do six or seven placements. Um, we're, we're looking now to condense it to, to six, but it'll be the same number of hours. It's supervised with clinical tutors in all the sites who support the students and teach the students. But the students actually work alongside the seniors in those hospital settings. And we've very good links with the large teaching hospitals and, and um, the, the tutors there are very experienced in, in supporting students. This would be an example of when the student is on a clinical placement and they're learning skills like auscultation, listening to the chest. And um, 
the, 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 the clinical tutor who's the, the person on the, on the right um, is helping the student in, in terms of, of what they're listening to and, and guiding the student in that area. They get to practice using different modalities, like this is um, a way of assisting ventilation in a patient. And so the student gets to practice that with the tutor before they would then see a, a patient who, who needed, needed that intervention. This is an example of, of assessing the spine and palpating the spine. And again, this is done in the, in the, 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 the um, clinical setting before the, the student would actually have a patient who had, a, had, had some sort of back problem. And stre strength, uh, going all the way to rehabilitation at the final stages. I don't know, some of you may have, have had um, injuries involving the knee. And, and this is where the final stages of rehabilitation before a patient may go back to, to playing football or whatever the, the patient was doing before. This is an example of, of um, gait re-education of, of um, when somebody needs to have crutches. They have to be proficient in walking with the crutches and actually that's walking up the stairs. So the, the physiotherapists um, practice all these things before they actually do that with the, the individual patient. In the final year, the students do a research project and they study in a particular optional area, and that can be in, 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 in areas such as exercise and disease, pain. They study the areas of ergonomics and professional issues, and they, they continue with their, their, their clinical placements. The number of students now, more and more of them actually stay on to do postgraduate um, work, and this would be an example of a um, some of the, the interventions that we may have, um, the, some of the, um, the measures that we may use in PhD or MSc research, and this is a picture of our laboratory where an individual is having their muscle strength assessed. Um, and this is something that you'd see in a number of sort of orthopaedic clinics where you're looking to, after people who've had a specific injury, to see actually do they have a return of muscle strength in order to be able to safely go back into, competitive, uh, into, comp into competition. And this is a way of measuring fitness. Again, another picture in our laboratory. This is a PhD student of mine who's actually just completed. And she's looking um, at actually the amount of, of how fit the patient is, looking at the amount of oxygen that they can consume when they're doing exercise um, testing. So on qualification, the, the graduates can use the title Chartered Physiotherapist. Um, and the, the initials, a member of the Irish Society of Chartered Physiotherapy. We're recognised as the health professions um, by the Department of Health. Further details of the course can be found either on, the, our, on our website, but if you want to know a little bit more about the profession, where I'd advise you to go is to look at the Irish Society of Chartered Physiotherapists website, which will give you a very good idea of the scope and the breadth of the actual profession that, that you would be entering. Thank you. That's really a, a sort of a main run through. Can I just tell you what, one thing that wasn't put on this um, presentation is we do have a number of students who do electives overseas. They um, either choose to go to a, to a specific area and we help them organise that between third year and fourth year. And then in our fourth year, we have an Erasmus programme where two to three students can go to Sweden for one term and we have then students that come back, come back to us. So that's just one other thing that, that wasn't on, on this presentation. So is there any questions? How many students do you have? 40 per year. The intake is 40 in, in, on this program. Is 40.